Hello, and welcome to Conquering Finale. My name is Jason Lafredo, and today, once again, we are getting the hang of Hyperscribe. Now, in this video, I'm mainly going to be talking about layers, um, recording in compound or odd meters, and two other record modes that we have uh, available to us within Hyperscribe. Uh, but before I get into any of that, I do want to touch on one thing that I talked about in the first video very briefly. Uh, I mentioned that there are different ways to start the recording of Hyperscribe, and most of those ways are a little bit either complicated or not all that important. So I, I will deal with those um, in one of the later videos. Um, but there is one other way of starting a recording in Hyperscribe, which I think is kind of handy to know about, and I'm going to show you that first. And that's with within the playback controls. Um, you'll notice that there actually is a record button uh, next to the play button here. And that record button is pretty much exclusively for the use of Hyperscribe. Um, so if you press that record button, it will start the count off and then start recording. Just like that. And a couple things to know about this, you'll notice that it's it put the frame in the clarinet part, right? Which is the topmost staff. If you had not been working in Hyperscribe previously and you open Hyperscribe to record and use the record button in the playback controls, it will assume you want to record in the topmost staff, in, that, in this case the clarinet, just like you saw. However, if you uh, were working in Hyperscribe and you s record recording some other staff, let's say we're going to record in the violin staff, let's say I recorded something and I went away and did some other work and came back to Hyperscribe, um, without going into another staff, if I were to hit that record button again, it would remember the last thing that I, the last staff that I recorded and start recording there. So you'll see now that it, it puts it in the violin, uh, violin one staff. All right. Just a little quirky thing about that. Um, the other neat thing is that we can actually use the measure uh, selection box here to uh, start the hyperscribe recording in a different place. And these little arrows will navigate you to a different measure. So if we wanted to start in measure three and press record, you'll see that it'll work in the violin one because that's the last one I was recording. And it'll start in measure three, just like that. All right. And then finally, uh, one final thing that I think is interesting about this is that you don't even need to be in the Hyperscribe tool to use that record button to start recording in Hyperscribe. You can be in any tool you want, the uh, staff tool, the chord tool, the expression tool, doesn't matter. So we're in the expression tool, go into the playback controls and hit record. And you'll notice that it switches immediately to Hyperscribe mode and it starts the count off and then the recording. All right, so that's a little neat little trick about that. You don't even have to be in Hyperscribe to uh, actually record in Hyperscribe. All right. Now, up until now, I've been uh, recording in Hyperscribe primarily in layer one, and it is possible to record in other layers in Hyperscribe. Uh, in fact, it's fairly simple, and it's really just a matter of being uh, in a different layer and having that layer active. So we know that layer one is active in this bottom left corner. We can see that but we can switch to layer two or use a shortcut option command numbers one, two, three, or four to switch between our layers. So, right, so option command two to put us into layer two. And now when we record, you'll see that it put those notes in layer two. All right, and easy enough, we just go to layer three if we want and record a horn part. Just like that, easy enough, right? Um, and if you have notes in a measure, like I do in this piano part, and we want to add a layer two to that, just start recording it. It will not overwrite those layer one notes if you're in layer two, just like this. All right, I don't know what I'm recording here, but you can see that the layer two notes have been uh, been recorded without overwriting the layer one notes. I'm just going to start deleting this, otherwise I'm going to start creating a mess of a sound here. Um, all right, so that's uh, layers. Now, if you had watched any of the uh, speedy entry videos, particularly speedy entry video 9-2, where I talked about layers um, and voices, now, the one thing I, I said in that video was that uh, Finale has uh, voices which are similar to layers, except they're, you know, you can have two voices per layer. So theoretically, you could have eight independent lines of music in Finale. And at the time when I did that, the, that video, I thought that um, 
uh, speedy entry was the only way to get to that second voice. Well, it turns out you can actually do that in Hyperscribe too. I'm not surprised that I missed it because I do not use Hyperscribe all that often. And um, the option for it is buried pretty deep. So um, I'm just gonna show you really quick where it is and how it works. And uh, you can decide to use this if you want. So you're in Hyperscribe. Go to the menu here, the Hyperscribe menu. Choose Hyperscribe options. Choose Quant settings. Choose more settings. Why would this option be here? Who knows? Uh, but in the bottom section, there is an option that says include voice two. And if we check that and get out of these series of windows, um, now when we use hyperscribe, um, it will uh, calculate a voice two if you play something that, that might require it. And let me just demonstrate that here. So you can kind of see, there they are, the voice two notes with the opposing stems or beams and everything. And um, I, I would recommend watching uh, video 9-2 to get a better, uh, th more thorough discussion about the difference between uh, voices and layers. But suffice it to say that the layer two notes in this first measure are the ones going up in this case. The layer two notes, or the voice two notes in the, th the second measure here, the, the notes going down and the eighth notes going up is the voice two. So um, voice two, unlike layer two, um, the, the stems and beams are not frozen in any particular one direction. They're just sort of uh, frozen opposing where the other notes are in voice one, if that makes sense. Um, uh, but again, I discussed this more in more detail in video 9-2. So if you wanna get a little bit more information about that, I would recommend checking that out. But um, this is all to say that voices do exist in Hyperscribe as well as uh, Speedy Entry. Who knew? Next, I want to talk about uh, compound and odd meters. And I'm going to go over to the second page here to show you this. I've got a 6-8 and a 7-8 section set up here. And I did mention in the first video that the, the setup is important. And you'll understand why once we start getting into this, particularly as it pertains to uh, the click. Now, in the beat source playback and or click options, um, you notice that I've got use playback tempo um, and the beat equals quarter note, right? That's what I had been using for those four four sections. If I were to use this setup in six eight, you're gonna get some wonk funky results because actually what you're gonna hear is, I don't know if you can hear it, but it's, it's clicking one, two, three, one, two, so it's actually clicking quarter notes as if this was a three, four measure, which is not totally not what you want, right? Um, so uh, the better option is to choose a different beat equals. And in six, eight, probably you want dotted quarter notes instead of the quarter note, right? And uh, with that chosen, click okay, you'll, start, you'll hear two beats per bar. obviously makes a lot more sense than hearing uh, you know the three quarter notes per bar in that six eight section all right now seven eight you know is going to be even more complicated actually if I if I keep that uh, dotted quarter beat uh, for the click you'll see what happens in seven eight here you'll get a, a weird last beat one two three four one two three one two three four one right which probably is going to be difficult to play to. So again, um, just important to get the, the click right. Make sure that the beat equals probably eighth note in this case um, to give you a, your best shot at something like seven, eight. All right. I, don't, I, I think I tried to play a five eight bar in that last one, but that's all right. Um, just wanted to point out that uh, you know, again, getting the the click right is important um, uh, when you're when you're dealing with compound and uh, and odd meters. All right. Now the next thing I want to look at uh, in the hyperscribe menu, you'll notice there's the second option here is a record mode, and there's three different record modes. Record in one staff is checked, and that's what basically what we had we have been doing. Uh, up until this point. And there's two other options, split into two staffs and multi-track record. I wanna talk about both of these things right now. So let's start with split into two staffs. 
Now, what Split Into Two Stabs is going to do is going to allow you to record in two stabs at once, which is going to be handy for things like piano parts. Um, when you select that Split Into Two Stabs, you're going to get this dialog box right here that's going to ask you where the split point is, basically, on your MIDI keyboard. Uh, in this case, I have it set to 57, which is the A. Um, we can change that. Uh, 60 would be middle C, by the way. Actually, I, this normally is set to 60 by default. Um, but we can also use the listen button, and when you do that, Finale is going to be listening for a note played on your keyboard, which I will do right now. I will play that A below middle C to get that 57. All right, and so that note becomes uh, the, the fixed split point for your multi-track record, or your multi-staff uh, recording, essentially. So anything played from the A upwards is going to be put into the uh, top staff, and anything from the G-sharp below that downwards is going to be put into the bottom staff. All right, and you click OK, and so now we're in split into two staffs record mode for Hyperscribe. And now from here, if we go and click on a measure, we have first of all, we have to click on the top measure uh, in order to get the, um, the split into two staffs. Is that right? Yeah, because if you ch click on the bottom one, it's thinking that there's a measure below it, which is not, um, which is wrong. So you have to click on the top staff to get the recording going in both staffs, and you'll see what we can achieve with this. All right, so you'll see that uh, it intelligently put the left-hand notes in the left hand and the right-hand notes in the right hand. Now, just to point out, remember that split point is at that A, and you'll see that I played some A's in this passage, and it got put into the right hand. If I were to try and do this and play uh, a G sharp, you'll see what happened is that uh, Finale dutifully puts that G sharp in the left hand, even though it's probably not where we would have wanted it to be, right? So you do have to be careful with uh, using that feature, um, just be aware that you know the split point is not very intelligent. It's definitely fixed at a certain point. So if you have some complicated piano music that crosses over right and left hands all the time, um, this may not be the most efficient way to uh, to enter notes because you'll be fixing a lot of things like this uh, in either simple or speedy entry after the fact. All right. Now I mentioned that uh, you know mostly you're going to use this for piano parts, you know things like harps. I, gu I guess it would work as well, um, but you can actually use it for uh, other instruments, believe it or not. And um, the only thing about that is that they do have to be consecutive, which sometimes is handy. Like if you're going to do uh, a violin one and a violin two part, actually it would be make more sense to do probably the viola and the cello, because there's a little bit more room. You can pick a better split point, right? Um, so we could do that. So let's say, uh, let's go back to that record mode, split into two staffs. If you select it again, you can choose a different split point. So let's say I'm going to choose a split point of E. Oops, listen. E below middle C, so 52. Um, and then if I were to ch start recording in the viola staff, Let's see what happens here, if I can do this. Now, one thing you notice off the bat is that you did not hear the cello part, even though I played the cello part. This is because when you use the split into uh, two staffs options, uh, Finale will only use the top staff to uh, as, a, as a playback while you're recording, right? So in the case of the cello, because the notes I were playing were below the viola range, you actually don't hear them despite the fact that I'm playing them, all right? Just something to know about that. The other thing to know about doing this with other instruments is that you do have to be careful if they are transposing. It will work perfectly fine um, if you're in concert key, right? In fact, if we do it with a clarinet and, and horn part here, let me just uh, change to a different split point. Let's put it at the A again. Right. If we were to do it in the clarinet and horn with in concert key, you see it's fine. Everything's fine. Everything gets gets put in the the correct notes, and then when you transpose back to uh, transpose key, everything is fine. However. 
if you're in transpose key and try and do that same thing, um, first of all, that F sharp that I started with a clarinet is now a G sharp, so you're kind of playing in the key of E now in the clarinet in this case. And if I were to try and do the same thing with a horn, let's see what happens. Oops, hyperscribe, please. All right. And now one thing you notice that I, is that I did actually go above my split points. That was an error. I should have set that up differently. Um, but you'll see that the the notes aren't exactly correct, right? If I were to play this back from bar three, you're gonna hear something weird. Oops, all right, let me go through this first, and then. Right, so you'll get some weird results uh, um, you trying to do hyperscribe uh, in transpose score because you can't actually, I unless you can sort of think and play in two different keys, I'm not even going to attempt it because I will fail miserably at, at doing that. Um, you will get some odd results. Um, and you'll never hear it back correctly because even if you try and play in two different keys, when you're recording it, you'll hear it in two different keys, but then when you play it back, it will be in the right keys. Uh, it, it's just a confusing mess. Um, unless you make one adjustment, which is that in the MIDI audio uh, menu under, where is it, device setup, there is an option for transpose MIDI on input. When you check this, um, now when you record in the clarinet part, uh, an F sharp is a concert F sharp. So now, despite the fact that you're in a transpose score, you should get the right result uh, with that line in hyperscribe. <laughs> See, so on my keyboard, I just played it in the key of D, despite the fact that it was, you know, recording the clarinet in E and the f horn in, in F, and uh, it should um, uh, should play back correctly. Yeah, there you go. All right, so that was the MIDI audio device setup transpose MIDI on input option. And again, it's all moot if you're using display and concert pitch, all right? I mean, all this is to say is that, you know, the split into uh, separate staves option or the, the split into two staves option for record mode in Hyperscribe, I, you know, it's better reserved for piano parts and, and harp parts and other parts that have uh, a grand staff situation. It can be used for other instruments, but, uh, you know, just be a little cautious about it because it, it does get confusing. And then finally, let's look at that last option for the record mode. We have multi-track record. Now, when we do this, we have a couple of interesting uh, options available to us. And the only way to uh, determine how we're which, which tracks we're going to record is actually in the uh, score manager in the instrument list. Um, so you'll notice that in your instrument list, you do have this uh, column called R, uh, which is record. So from here, you can actually select a bunch of instruments and they can be any instruments you want. So let's say I'm going to select the clarinet, the violin one and the viola to record and I've just pressed the record button for all three of those instruments, right? So now I'm going to go to layer uh, uh, measure three here and I'm going to use the record button to record. Um, when I start my hyperscribe recording session you'll see that it now recorded in all three of those staffs, which is kind of neat. Um, and it will only record unison. So, you know, if you start playing three notes, for example, it's gonna put, you know, three notes in each uh, staff, which is kind of weird. So if we start at bar five here, I'll show you that. Do something like this. Right, it's not <laughs> it's not going to be that smart that it's going to divide this amongst the three staffs that you're recording in. Right, it's going to put all three notes in all three staffs, which is probably not what you want to do. But um, you know, you can use that for uh, you know recording a, a bunch of unisons in, in a, a bunch of uh, uh, staffs that way. Um, 
another interesting thing we can do with this is if we go back to that instrument list, not only can we record um, within an instrument, we can actually open up these triangles here and record just a, sa a certain layer of an instrument. So what I've done here is I've selected the clarinet in B flat, I've selected layer two of violin one, and I'm gonna select, or select layer three of horn to record, right? And that'll be good, let's try that. And let's see what happens when I start recording in measure three here. Right, so now you'll see that you got layer one, uh, three for the horn, and two for violin one. Um, and you may also notice something that it, this is b strange behavior, I think, in the record mode, multi track record. Um, for some reason, the sound that you hear when you record this way will always be the most, the bottom most staff. I, I've played around with this, and it doesn't matter what order you press the record buttons in or anything like that, it just, it will, um, it will, you'll hear the bottom most staff that you have selected to record, all right? And then um, w one final thing that I think is a, an interesting uh, thing about this is that when you choose the multi-track record in Hyperscribe, a new column appears in the score manager right here, and it's actually called, it's hard to see, I can't actually get it to um, expand anymore. Let me see if I can, no. But what it actually is supposed to say, I can't get it to expand. What it actually is is record channel. And you'll see that there's a one here. Now, I'm just going to show you that this disappears. If, if I were to choose a different record mode, let's go back to record in one staff and go back to the instrument list. See that that whole column disappeared. It, that, o that column appears only when you have multi-track record uh, selected. You get this uh, record channel option here. <coughs> now... What this does is fascinating. You can actually choose to record. Let's say we're going to record, um, I'm going to record the clarinet and the cello, all right? And if I were to change the record channel for the cello to channel two, right? Now, uh, you can't see my studio setup here, but to my left, I have a small MIDI controller, and to my right, I have a larger um, Korg keyboard and I've set this up so that the the MIDI controller to my left is uh, sending messages through channel one and the the Korg is sending messages through channel two so with this setup um, I can reach across to both keyboards play the cello part with my right hand and the clarinet with my left hand uh, different notes from channels one and two and let's see if I'm, I'm gonna attempt this actually let me just get rid of this music first and I'm going to try this here in bar three. Wish me luck, because this is a little backwards for me, but let me see if I can do this. <laughs> it's so weird playing the bass line with my right hand and the, the top line with my left hand. But as you can see, you can record um, different lines this way using two keyboards, all right? I don't know <laughs> the practical purpose of this. I, I've just, I was um, pl playing around with this and I discovered this and I, I thought it was worth mentioning that it is a possibility. So there you go. Theoretically, <laughs> this, this is what cracks me up. Theoretically, you can have up to 16 record channels. So if you had a setup in a large room with eight different, 16 different players or eight different players with two keyboards each, and we're able to connect it all and have each keyboard send through a different channel and you had 16 staffs, theoretically in finale you could record 16 parts at once using Hyperscribe in that manner. Um, I, I, that would crack me up to see somebody attempt to do that, but, uh, but uh, it, it is a possibility, I suppose. All right, so um, I think I covered a lot. We co covered some layers and compound odd meters and both of those record modes um, ad nauseum. <laughs> And uh, so I think I'm going to call it a day for this Hyperscribe lesson. Uh, so thanks for watching and come back and we'll do a, a few more videos on Hyperscribe. All right. See you then.